everybody, welcome back to Recordology, the Vinyl Nation. We are locked and loaded for an awesome show tonight. So do you remember the Sony automatic turntable we picked up surprisingly? It was like from 2017, it was brand new almost. Picked it up at a thrift store a few weeks ago, reviewed it. I thought we'd deep dive into it. Now, I'm not doing this just for the sake of tearing it apart, which I want a good excuse to do that at all times. However, there's something extra here. I want to find out who makes this thing because I'm pretty sure Sony's not doing it. It's made in China. I'm pretty sure Sony doesn't have any manufacturing in China directly. I'm pretty sure it's outsourced, but I wanna find out. It doesn't have any Bluetooth, so there's no FCC ID on this. So in order to find out, there may be a clue on the inside. I'm not sure, maybe not, but I thought we'd look at some of the ICs, some of the internal components, see if we can find some clues. So that's what we're doing today. But before that, I just wanna say thank you so very much for joining us and for supporting the channel. To those of you who are new members of the Vinyl Nation, welcome. So, let's grab our favorite tumbler filled with my favorite Friday afternoon beverage, water. And let's enjoy today's show. You're not gonna wanna miss this. You know, there are certain things that just remind you that you are with the perfect person in life. And this is one of them for me. My wife loves the great pumpkin Charlie Brown show. And today I'm sitting there and she's like, she knew I was getting set up for the show. And she's like, you better go check out your record player. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Is something wrong with it? She's like, I don't know. Were you in there? Were you doing? No, I don't think it wasn't me. And I'm like, was uh, our son in there? Was he doing something? No, it wasn't him. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? Did it fall? I mean, what's going on? She's like, you're just gonna have to go look. So I came in here and this is what we got. <laughs> the great pumpkin was here. That's awesome. Also a nice reminder that we have, um, uh, we're right up to like 10, nine or 10 days to Halloween, which is crazy absolutely crazy yeah this is way too tempting we got this obviously a bag of candy to hand out and having this in the house is um is not good for me because i just want to snack on this stuff <laughs> so i'm putting it out of sight and out of mind but i love that kind of stuff so hopefully if you are with your person uh that's a blessing thank god for it if not then you know, prayers to you that you get there you know sooner than later so we are looking down the barrel of a Sony automatic turntable, one that we have reviewed recently on the show, but I thought we would dig into it a little deeper. Like I said in the intro, I wanna find out who makes this thing. So before we do that, I thought we would demonstrate it a little bit. If you haven't seen the main review of this, check that out. Um, but in spite of that, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. I probably should have done this before we film, but that's okay. Oh, I should have turned it on with the candy and stuff on there. That would have been hilarious. Okay, so let's say that you're about to spin up your favorite copy of Strawberry Shortcake, and you've got this record player, and you're like, I want to spin it up. How would you work it? So this is an interesting one. It has a, a little stylus guard there, so we'll flip that up and out. We're going, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to speak to every feature on this thing again. We've done that. But this is a 17 or a 30 centimeter record. This one's a 30 centimeter. Obviously, it's a 12 inch record. And we're simply going to hit start. And it does the rest. It spins it up. It lifts the tone arm. It raises it up. It rotates it over to the right position. And it drops it down. And the wonderful yet magical and charming tunes of Strawberry Shortcake and her friends will come forth. No built-in speakers, so we're not hearing anything right now, but actually you can hear a little bit just acoustically off the needle, which is interesting. I remember when I got my first recent record player a few years ago, our son was sitting there looking at this thing. He's blown away. I'm still blown away by it too. Now he, you know, was born, you know, long after, you know, records had, you know, dropped out of major favor in the popular music market. Um, but for somebody who, you know, did not grow up with, you know, tangible media for the most part, you know, to have, to see something physical, something inanimate by itself, something with mechanical information stored in it, 
being used in such a way that makes sound is truly amazing. It's part of the charm of records and, you know, especially picture discs. I think they should all be picture discs or colored vinyl. I mean, part of it's looking at it, right? It's fun. It's mesmerizing. Uh, but he was just blown away, especially that you could hear sound even without speakers connected because it's, you know, it is the, the needle is a transducer. It's turning mechanical information into electrical sound. All right. So, um, yeah, you can either, once you're done, you can manually cue and everything. Once you're done, you can hit the stop button and it'll raise it up and it will bring it back home. Oh, wait, this one's a cueing switch. So that just brings it up and down. This stop switch is the one that brings it home. Uh, if it gets to the end of the record, it will... Um, It'll bring it back home automatically too. Somebody, I, and I always say that these are fully manual and automatic because people are like, well, what about if I want to manually cue a record? Or what if I don't have a 12 or 7 inch record? Those are my only two choices. How do I cue up a 12 inch or a 10 inch record or something weird? Maybe like a 6 inch or a 5 inch record. Well, you can man manually cue it. I mean, I don't have to push any buttons to get this to work, but you cannot deactivate the auto return without getting inside it. So, Speaking of getting inside it, that's the main point, and that's what we're really here for. But I thought since we're looking at a record player, we might as well, you know, operate it a little bit. So let's uh, unplug it. That's a good idea. Now, even after you unplug your record player, first of all, let me preface this, but don't do this. Don't do that. I'm not recommending this. You shouldn't do this. And I'm going to do something that's not recommended. There's a big surprise. Uh, but when we get inside there, capacitors can still be loaded with, with voltage. So you're going to be, you can't just touch stuff because it's, it's not fully depleted of electrical energy just because we unplugged it. So let's see here. We're going to start with playing the rubber mat off. Uh, this platter doesn't have a clip on it. It just lifts straight off. And the belt, uh, there's a sub platter there. It comes off. I'm going to really try to avoid doing another review on this. I have a tendency to just want to launch into my normal things. Again, the mechanism here is very similar to the Iowa's of the 90s, very similar to the Audio Technica's very similar to the Crosley automatics, all of which are made by hand pin turntables. I think Iowa was made by hand pin. I'm not 100% sure on Iowa. So it's possible this is made by Iowa as well. The design aesthetic, especially with the raised areas back here, kind of give off vibes of an Audio Technic LP60, the original one, not the X. The X is flush all the way across the plinth. But yeah, I mean, it's a great, this, Great turntable. So what, how do we get into it further? What are we going to do? Because as you can see, we already can see all the way down to the bottom of the cabinet. And, you know, there's not a whole lot in here, but there's going to be a preamp circuit. There's going to be a, a main circuit board for the motor and all that stuff. So we want to get into it. So we need to be very careful because this tone arm doesn't have a clip holding it in place. So you could either use like a rubber band or something. Uh, to put on there. So I'm going to show you what I do. Somewhere along the way I picked up this. It's just a wire with a rubber cover over it. I have no idea what it came out of. You can see the wire there. But it's a great little trick or a little tool you can use for this. A bread tie would work as well. But that will hold it in place. And we're going to want to make sure obviously that when we flip this over that we're propping it against something so that it's not gonna put the weight down on this. That would break off, we don't wanna do that. Okay, so I found a nice pumpkin to prop it up against. And we've got screw holes here. Looks like the feet have screws. And then there's additional ones as well. You'll notice that these two back feet are in weird positions, they're not in the corner. That's to allow you know speed adjustment trim pots to be located right underneath that motor. So I'm gonna go through here and remove all of the screws and then we'll do the big reveal hey i think i got everything out all the feet were the same size even though these were in a larger housing it's just like a you know little cup that sits there so i guess i'll pull those off but yeah the feet are all the same this is rubberized sort of toothed foot screwed in there with that little screw all right, let's see what we got here. I love reveals like this because I'm a geek and I like to see what's under the hood. So here we go. We're doing this for the first time together. I have not peeked. Uh, cool. I love that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, there goes the screws. That'll be fun. Kind of dusty in here. Wow. There's just not much to it though. I mean, honestly, there is not a lot. It is a very... Wow, this is really interesting. So we've got the, uh, very interesting. Look at this. It's 
this is wild. How does this work? Like, they're like push rods, but they're not connected to anything. I'm not sure if I knock something loose. But that is really interesting. All right, let's take a closer look all the way around and see what we can see. All right, this is truly fascinating. These literally are just like push rods that push, you know, ever so gently on these different levers depending on the positioning. But as you can tell, it's not like super rigid. That is amazing. And then this is the underside linkage of the automatic mechanism. You'll see quite a bit of metal and plastic in here. We've got some shielding. This is like a metallically lined piece of cardboard. So there's going to be an IC under there that's protected. There's a power supply coming in. What is that? It's like rubber. That's something to do with the power. So yeah, you don't want to be touching things. Let's look a little closer there. So yeah, that's the power board right there. Very interesting. Wow. This stuff is cool. I love this stuff. We have a Sankyo motor. Interesting. I'm surprised it's not a JYK. Like all of them, but it's very similar to a JYK. Let's look right under the edge there. 9 volt. DC motor. There are the trim pots for the speed, but what's interesting about this, okay. So I was confused because I thought the, the trim pots in the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of the cabinet that we saw earlier before we took it off were for speed, but I really think that what they were was they were positioning screws to adjust where the lead in and run out are. You know how far into it 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 it, it goes before it removes. Oh, look, there's our tone arm loose, so apparently our little thing didn't hold. <laughs> but to um, position where it starts, where it stops, all that good stuff. Oh, this is wild. It's very basic. Look at this glue. It's like Elmer's glue. How funny. I mean, I don't see anything that looks like chintzy. Like there's a little micro switch. Just a spring and a little contact. Literally just connecting these two wires. They go up to the motor there. There's a little board there with a capacitor on it. Yeah, I am not seeing anything that is uh, betraying its secrets of manufacture. Let's see if I can get a better look at that board under that reflective piece. Okay, so I've removed the screws from this guy up here. I'm not sure, there's a grounding wire here and there. I'm not sure if that's going to reveal just the bottom of the PCB or the whole thing's gonna come out. So there is the bottom of the board. Here's what this looks like underneath, kind of interesting. That's just, that's gotta be some sort of shield, some interference shield. So this right here is the USB connection and up here is the preamp. So the preamp circuitry is gonna be in here. Do we have anything in here preventing me from lifting this guy up? And we'll see if we can get a close look at that board. Come on. Obviously trying to do this without destroying anything, if possible. Okay, so we're stuck down here. Okay, so this white wire here is glued into this bundle. So I am somewhat limited, but I will peek under there. Okay, so it, it is pretty tight, and it's hard to see, but right down here... It says July of 2010, which is interesting. As I said before, this turntable was manufactured in 2017, and it's pretty sparse uh, under there. There's not much. We've got capacitors, we've got resistors, mostly capacitors, and that is about it. It looks like some of this adhesive or whatnot, this white uh, kind of glue stuff, maybe cracking a little bit around the base of that USB. Not 100% sure, and there's the preamp switch so yeah, I mean, this is super, super basic. I do see some brand names on some of the uh, microchips under here, so we'll take a look at that next. Okay, so I got the light on to try and help us a little bit. It's really hard to see. That one kind of square one center at the top of the screen there, I believe that's Texas Instruments. Can't read what that one says. AD, I don't know if there's a brand name on there or not. And then down here, let's flip this around. It's like obscured by the glue. I can't quite tell what it says. 
and then a blank little one up there. Yeah, not a lot of information, you know, to let us know where this thing, was, or who made this thing. We know it was made in China. But compared to other turntables, I think the quality is very acceptable. I don't see any shortcuts. I don't see anything that's over, overtly cheap. Some people cry foul the, the second they see glue, but it's just, that's just the way it is. So, all right, well, we've confirmed that we don't know anything, <laughs> which is par for the course on this channel. Uh, just kidding. We, we Sometimes we get to the bottom of stuff. We've actually, you know, pulled the mask off of a lot of, uh, you know, OEM turntables, so much so that sometimes the company's like, hey, could you stop mentioning uh, all this stuff? You know, even though it's all public information, as soon as they have a Bluetooth component, they have to disclose, an F they have an FCC ID there, and that discloses the internal pictures, like this kind of stuff, and then sometimes even manufacturing data, which can be fun. So everything is going back together fine. Here are those three positions I was talking about uh, to position where the automatic engagements occur. But it does actually have trim pods from the outside, which is great for speed. So that is good. And yeah, I'm just putting it all back together. I thought just so we could dispel any speculation, we should probably test it out after I get it back together. One thing I did not mention, although you probably saw it under the hood, was a pretty pronounced uh, white plastic wheel somewhere under there. And that is the cog that it's, a, it's sort of a cam gear. And that is where that dictates the position of everything based on what switch is activated and all that good stuff. So uh, we've talked about all this stuff before. So I, again, I don't want to be repetitive in every single video. I try to talk about different stuff. But all right, let me finish putting this back together and we'll give it a test. Got it back on and it's thinking that it is in a certain position in that cog. Don't worry, the guard is down. Just need to reset it because this cam gear has slots in it, kind of like a maze on the bottom. And that's what tells it where it's at, if there's a record, where the record's at, all that stuff. So it gets a little confused when you, you know, put it back together. But it is working because, again, the guard is down, so don't freak out. We can spin it up. We can rotate our stylus over. I'm going to keep the lift in the up position so it won't drag down on the platter. And then when you're done, we can hit the stop button and it comes back home. And it should stop the platter. And we're in business, you guys. I do have an extra screw. There's a screw missing. One of the screws we took off the bottom is missing. So that's less than ideal. But this granite conceals a multitude of sins. It occurred to me at some point that rather than propping it on a pumpkin, I could have just put the uh, dust cover on, which is now on. But it's so reflective, it's hard to film with it. So once I realized that, and it's already scratched too. So I was like, what the heck? I just flipped it over with the cover on and it was very easy to work on. Also, do not put your Crosley Groove Goo on a porous napkin like this to dry after you wash it. Should have seen that one coming, but yeah, that was not the most, uh, that wasn't the wisest of ideas. So we're gonna call this a success. We uh, demonstrated it works before we took it apart. We took it apart, we looked at it, we put it back together. And it works still, even though it's been uh, reassembled by yours truly, which, you know, it survived recordology. It probably will last forever at this point. All right, and that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed putting it together for you. And here's the great news. It's Friday. The weekend is here. We're just getting started. I am so excited for this weekend. I can't even tell you it's Friday as of the filming of this. I don't film in advance very, very much or very often. So we are here on Friday afternoon as of the filming of this. And I am just excited to have this weekend. It's going to be awesome. And we got another show coming your way in just a couple of days. I don't know if you watched the live we did Friday afternoon uh, where we just played records. I gave folks a little bit of a teaser and invited them to join the nation with us here if they hadn't done so already. If you have joined, especially because of that, welcome and thank you. Uh, but we got another show coming up this weekend. It's going to be awesome. Something that I recently, this idea recently came to me, but I'm super, super excited. You're not going to want to miss that either. But that's going to do it for now. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.